Good morning, everyone. Oh my gosh. I wish I had a remote thing for the, uh, for starting the video. There must be something like that on the market. Anyways, good morning. And so today what we're going to do, we're, we're going to have some water here going on in the pot. So, um, yesterday, I'm actually going to, uh, Add a little bit more water just so that doesn't get too too hot so yesterday we did these beautiful um, kind of a baked beans but they weren't really baked we kind of made like a bean sauce and a, um, maple syrup molasses a garlic onion bean and it turned out really good the beans were just absolutely seriously to die for really really good so um, so when we did this we had the onions and the onions were, um, the, I had too many onions. And so I put them in this dish, so I have these minced onions. So we're just going to put these guys in here and get these going while we do something else. Um, okay, so getting the, all those onions in there. And I'm just going to put that on a little bit low-ish, kind of, because we're going to do something else. We have lots to do today. I, um, I'm currently taking a course at Royal Roads University, and so um, I'm kind of busy Monday through Wednesday for the next seven weeks. It's an eight-week course. And, um, and so I'm trying to get all of my whole weeks. Good morning, Minik. How are you? Um, I'm trying to get the whole week's worth of Facebook Lives into one day. <laughs> Or two days. I'm going to do Thursdays and Fridays. Unless the course schedule changes, um, pretty much I'm available to do this uh, Thursdays and Fridays. So what we're going to do today is a couple things. I um, am very excited to share with you. Now I know <clears throat> if you've been watching my Facebook Live for the last 10 months that I've been doing it, I've gone on and on and on about probiotics and how important it is to have probiotics in your diet. How your, um, the probiotics are your beneficial bacteria, um, feeds your gut biome, which is so important. Hi Terry, good morning. Um, yeah, you know, so I, I mean, a lot of, a lot of what I do is probiotics, probiotics, and probiotics. So for raw fermented sauerkraut, um, we did fermented um, salsa, which is amazing, fermented vegetables, fermented carrots, all kinds of ferments, and so that beneficial bacteria is so, so important for your um, intestinal system, as, but your immune system, your whole immune system. They found that probiotics um, have a huge impact on your, hey Jane, good morning, nice to see you, um, but probiotics have such a beneficial impact on not only your immune system, um, your whole body, as well as especially brain function. And they've worked a lot with probiotics and the brain function, um, using probiotics for things like autism and Alzheimer's and um, depression and all those kinds of things. So that so you're you can't say enough about probiotics. Oh my gosh! If if you've had problems with yeast infections. Um, Oh gosh, headaches, all kinds of things can be related to probiotics. A lack of, of the right bacteria, right? It's a lack of the right probiotic bacteria. So what we're going to do today is <clears throat> two different things. <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice again. I don't really talk to people too much <laughs> during the week anymore. So I do tend to lose my voice. This is a, um, this is cilantro in hot water and cilantro... <clears throat> there we go. The cilantro, I know a lot of people don't like cilantro. They don't like the taste of it. Hey, Darlene, good morning. Um, but the cilantro is really, really good for drawing toxins and heavy metals out of the body. And so um, if you're working in any kind of a, anywhere where you're ingesting chemicals, like if you're a hairdresser or working on cars or, you know, inhaling fumes and, and other toxic things, cilantro actually... Um, detoxes and kind of chelates um, 
metals, especially out of the body. So cilantro is really good. And I should have put some ginger in there. I'm so not used to talking all week. <laughs> but anyway, okay, we will get through this if my voice lasts. Okay, so I'm just simmering these onions, but what I wanted to talk to you about was the importance of the probiotics. And I bought this at Healthy Habits in Port Alberni. Um, it's a health food store, and you can get it at any health food store. Actually, you can get this in a lot of grocery stores now, which is super exciting. They have all of these products. This is called Gut Shot, and it's a fermented veggie drink. This one happens to be ginger beet. Um, so you can add different things to this, but what I wanted to show you is that we will actually make um, <clears throat> make this probiotic. So what you do is you get, you can take pretty much um, half a cabbage, which is pretty much what this is. And I don't know why this cabbage is not very green, but it's not very green, but that's okay. We're gonna work with that. So you take your cabbage and you just put it in chunks of um, whatever it is that's going to fit in your either your food processor or your Vitamix. And so just cut your cabbage into chunks and um, I think we can fit the whole thing in here pretty much. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make our own probiotic drink, right? So that, I mean, these things are super awesome. You can just go to the store and buy them. They're raw fermented juice from the sauerkraut. In this case, it has ginger and beet in it, um, which you can do too. You, I was buying one and they don't make it any, or I don't know, I haven't been able to get it anymore. I don't know if they don't make it anymore, but healthy habits can't get it. And it was my favorite because it was a kimchi um, probiotic drink. And I liked it because it was like super spicy and really good with um, with um, all kinds of um, peppers and, and um, oh, I don't know, it had all kinds of things, um, daikon, ginger, all that kind of stuff. And so I really liked that one. And they don't make it anymore. So, so this is what we're going to do. But I'm just going to show you a regular cabbage one. And then you can add whatever you want to it. Um, I do happen to have, uh, in my little, in my little pile of stuff here, I do happen to have some ginger, so I am going to add some ginger to this, um, but I could, I do actually happen to have beets, um, although I forgot to bring one here this morning, so I'm not going to worry about that right now, but the beet, I'm going to put this much ginger in, so like roughly half a head of cabbage in a that much ginger, fresh ginger. Um, see, this one's a nice red color because of the beet, so you could do that too. So we're just going to do this. We're going to take two cups of water, which um, actually I forgot to get extra water, but what we're going to do, I have an idea what we're going to do. I already have salted water because I ferment so much that I always keep some water with salt in it handy, so I'm going to grab that because I neglected to um, get a bunch of water in here. Oh, and a, and a measuring cup would be helpful too. Okay, so when you're doing, I, I, I always seem to be so disorganized, I don't have one here, but these um, these fermented lids work really, really well. And I do so many ferments that I always keep a little bit of um, salted water in, in, you know, handy in a jar to add so that, because when you're fermenting, it's so important. And I know the people that have watched me do this so many times, probably a hundred. Um, if, the, if the food comes above the salt brine, it will start to mold and create a SCOBY. And some of those, it's a whole nother thing. I have many videos on it um, as to whether your SCOBY is a SCOBY and it's okay or whether it's a mold and you have to throw it out. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into that. We're just gonna do this probiotic. So basically what you're gonna do, take your half a cabbage, 
whatever else you want to add, some beets, some ginger, you could add carrots, you could add onions, and you're going to take um, one tablespoon of salt, and I'm using a Himalayan sea salt here, and one tablespoon to two cups of water. Okay, so you're gonna have two cups of water here, and just gonna give that a little bit of a stir, so I can see some of the salt still at the bottom. But once it mixes in with the, whatever it is you're fermenting, it's all good. But I always keep these around because if you're, oh look at that, it's exactly two cups, how perfect is that? Gotta love it when life delivers perfection once in a while. Okay, so, um, so that is the salted water. And I'm just going to set that there for now. And um, yeah, so you're just going to, if, if I didn't have that pre-made, you would just take one tablespoon, two cups of water, add it to your cabbage. And we're going to give this a spin right here with my fantastic lid that I have. And I'm not sure if you can see the Vitamix. But anyway, it's just the Vitamix going. <laughs> that. So you could do this, actually you can do it in any blender at all because um, if you cut your cabbage up fine enough, your blender should be able to handle it. So we have the, um, basically your cabbage and whatever you're going to add to it. Like I said, you can add carrots, you can add onions. We just have, um, and look at that, it just fits absolutely perfect. How cool is that? Wow. I can actually get a little bit more in there. Okay, so with any, whoops, <laughs> I have so many things planned for you guys today. With um, any ferment, you want it to not be exposed to the air. You want the food to not come up out of the brine, or like I said, it will start to mold. Um, so if you want more information on that, because I feel like people want more information but I've already done this video so many times. Look up Sandor Cats, S-A-N-D-O-R, and it's K-A-T-Z or Z, as I like to say. Uh, Sandor Cats, and he has all that on the different um, scobies and molds and things that happen, and he's the, the absolute king of fermentation. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this to ferment. Um, you know, in the summer it would be two or three days. Right now it might be five days because uh, it's cooler inside. But you want to cover this with either, you could use a coffee filter with an elastic, a cloth, clean cloth with an elastic, something to keep the dust out but let it breathe. Don't put the lid on because it's going to ferment and bubble and it needs to release the gases. I have been so um, honestly thrilled with these uh, new lids that I have. These are the Easy Grip lids, and they call them Easy Grip because they've got the little, little, for people that are as old as I am, and you're losing your grip <laughs> on things. It has these little grippers, <clears throat> so, um, so that it's easy to take it on and off. So they're called Easy Grip, but they're really cool because they have a little thing here for the date that you started your ferment. And so you'll know when you start it, how long you've left it. And they also have a little pinhole here um, to release the gases. So, you know, that Easy Grip is so awesome. They should make these for like, like these kind of lids too. That would be really handy for people like me. Okay, so the nice thing about the Easy Grip <clears throat> is you, um, it comes with a little pump and you pull the um, air out. Because really it's the air that starts the molding um, bacteria from, that allows the bacteria to start growing is the air. So you're pulling the air out and then um, once you have the air out, you can feel it when it becomes firm, right? And so that will um, allow you to leave it longer. If you're using a, a cloth or a um, coffee filter or something like that, uh, keep an eye on it because this is going to float up above the brine and so it'll be really sensitive to growing not good bacteria. So you want to keep an eye on that. The other thing you can do is you can get these weights 
and you put them, they fit inside the jar, and you put them in to hold everything down. Now in this case, because it's just mush, really, um, it's just going to flow up, float up past the weights. But if you were fermenting something like carrots or that kind of thing, it would hold it down. Even sauerkraut, it'll help hold it down. So, um, so we're just going to set this aside, leave it for a few days. And the way that you make the liquid is you um, just strain it off after it started fermenting and it's starting to sound like <laughs> it's starting to sound like <laughs> starting to taste like um, sauerkraut instead of salt cabbage. Um, starts to taste sour. Then you would just squish it, all of the um, solid parts out, and you're left with the juice. So you have your own probiotic juice. And um, and then of course you can use the the um, you know the um, pulp. You can use the pulp in whatever soup, salads. You know you can use it in whatever because it's just fermented sauerkraut. You can just eat it straight up and add it to your salad too. So this is that's a cool thing. I'm really happy. Um, I ran across this recipe thanks to <clears throat> thanks to my son actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. More um, cilantro tea. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do now is um, <laughs> we're burning our onions here. Okay, so we're gonna burn the onions. No, we're not. We're gonna add some water and um, actually quite a bit. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna make super simple soup of the day. We're going to do a lentil soup. Crazy easy, you know, saute some onions, throw some lentils in, I don't know, that many, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's a couple lentils. And um, I'm gonna put in some collards and some kale. So we have onions, collards, kale from the garden. I'm just gonna chop these guys up fairly fine. And um, yeah, it's just gonna be like a five minute lentil soup. And uh, honestly, the little red lentils, they cook up so fast and so easy. Um, you know, it's, it's just a super quick way to make a really healthy soup. And um, your lentils are, um, obviously they're a really good source of protein. Um, but they have, uh, they, they've got B vitamins in them. Um, apparently lentils <clears throat> are one of the foods that really helps you to stay satisfied and not hungry for a really long time. So, um, yeah, they just, they tend to balance everything out so that you're not hungry. I'm projecting to a class, so I feel like I need to project. And when you're not used to doing that every day, um, Sometimes my throat just doesn't like it. Okay, so we're adding some garlic to this too. And um, this is actually minced garlic, um, minced dried garlic, which is super awesome. And then I just added some granulated garlic as well. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne because the cayenne is so good for circulation. It's really good for your blood pressure. It opens up all the capillaries. It's really good for cold hands and feet. Um, I talk about cayenne a lot. If you've seen my Facebook Live, you, you hear me talk about cayenne and all the benefits a lot. <clears throat> I'm going to add some coriander here and, um, and a little bit of kelp. This is, no, not actually kelp. This is dulse. It's different than kelp. It's a seaweed. And um, so it adds a lot of trace minerals. The seaweeds are so good for um, reducing... Uh, actually reversing the effects of radiation. They've used seaweed in places like Japan uh, where there has been nuclear radiation issues, let's just say, and they use the seaweed to help to reverse the effects of the radiation. So there's been a lot of studies on that and um, research and, and um, not just research but actually using it, you know. And so my lentil soup's looking pretty green here, and you guys are used to that. I add a lot of greens to my, my soups usually turn into like completely a different animal because I just can't help but put way too many healthy things in here. So this is the Celtic sea salt. 
And a Celtic sea salt I really like because it's not as salty uh, tasting as the Himalayan and it, and it has a lot of minerals. The Himalayan does too. It's also very, very good and I use it a lot, but I like the mild, um, rich mineral flavor of the, um, of the Celtic sea salt. So we have the beautiful soup happening here. What I'm going to add is um, some coconut milk as well. Um, what did I make the other day with coconut milk? I can't remember. But anyway, here's the other half. And um, <laughs> just kind of plops itself in there. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. And so that's going to add a really nice coconut flavor to the lentils. And what we'll see how thick the lentils get. Probably have to add a little bit more water to it. But, um, but as soon as these guys cook up and they get nice and soft, we'll see. And so you've got your collars, which gives you your vitamin D. Oh, sorry, no. Vitamin K. Oh, probably has vitamin D too. I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, but your, um, your lentils have copper in them. Uh, what did I say? B vitamins, copper, um, obviously fiber, uh, manganese, and um, that kind of thing. Oh my gosh. So we're going to, um, we're going to let these guys cook up a little bit. And then uh, one of the things I was going to say is our, our um, radish sprouts are coming along really nicely. So the radish sprouts are, are any of the sprouts are like a superfood. They, um, it's like the seed, any of your nuts and seeds that are soaked are like the gland of the plant and they feed your glands. So they feed any of these nuts and seeds that are soaked, um, pretty much for overnight at least. Um, they feed the glands like the pituitary gland, adrenal glands, um, even the pancreas they're helpful for, uh, hormonal issues, um, you know, you can't really say enough about soaked nuts and seeds. And this one here has um, beans as well. So this is like um, azuki beans and mung beans and a couple of um, chickpeas or garbanzo beans. And so these are really, really good too. So just like even two or three, three or four a day really helps your immune system, really helps with your glandular system. And... Um, and it's a superfood, so it's super, super good for you. Okay, these guys are coming to a little bit of a boil, so we just want it to simmer. Um, okay, so basically we have onions, we have lentils, we have garlic, uh, Celtic sea salt, collards, kale, and I think that's pretty good. I think you could add ginger if you want. Let's add a little ginger. Where'd my little ginger go? We'll just add, throw this little piece in here, just for some ginger, and uh, bring up a little bit of spice. Oh yes, we did add cayenne for the spice. Okay, so, um, oh, I wanted to talk to you again. I had so many things to uh, share with you. And so this is Oregon grapefruit. Um, I have been gathering this over the winter. And it is, it is nature's antibiotic. It's a really, really awesome um, alternative to golden seal. For those of you that, that um, know what golden seal is and does, it is also a nature's antibiotic. But the golden seal tends to be endangered. Um, so the Oregon grape is a better choice environmentally. And you use the root. And it has the... Um, I'm just going to show you here... Um, <laughs> I've been dehydrating the Oregon grape. Um, I'm selling it on my Etsy store, um, but anyone who's local here in the Pacific Northwest, it's very, very easy to gather your own. And so the Oregon grape, um, I'm just going to hold it while I talk so you guys can kind of see the leaves are, are um, they look a little bit like holly, and they usually grow where Salel is. So they have um, the, this stem, I'll show you the stem it's not quite as yellow now but the stem you can tell it's very very yellow when it's fresh cut and it, and that's because of the berberine the berberine has oh, let me shut this off the berberine has um, 
uh, well, antibiotic, like I was saying, uh, antimicrobial, antifungal. Um, it's really good for the skin. It's really good for the liver. Um, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, good for the immune system. Like if you think you have something coming on, some sort of something, it's not the thing that you would use all the time though. This is like if you think you have something like an infection or a um, fungal thing going on or a microbial thing going on, then you would use this temporarily. Uh, you would just take these, the little roots and um, good for the liver and the skin as well. But like I said, short term, you take the roots like Pretty much with any herb, you're going to um, you're going to use like a teaspoon per cup of hot water. So if you're taking this, you would whoops, you would just use you know one little piece. And if, because this is a thick root, you would simmer it because it's not a um, leaf like a tea. The tea leaves are thinner and smaller, right? So pouring hot water over them is fairly effective. But if you're using a root, you really need to simmer it to get the medicinal qualities out. And so. <laughs> I did turn this off and so um, yeah so you would use that and you would drink it uh, you know maybe half a cup three times a week kind of thing and no more than two weeks so it is a short-term use but really beneficial um, you know if you think you have something going on like something and you and you've gone to the doctor but it's still not really um, helping kind of thing you know you always want to go to the doctor first and rule that out that there's anything serious going on but if you um, just feel like you've got something that keeps rumbling that it's not really clearing up um, you know it is it is a really effective uh, herb and so I encourage you to look it up and find out more about it okay so might be something useful for you short term like I said uh, the other thing is don't ever, ever, ever take any herbs if you are on any medication at all. Um, there's so many contraindications with herbs and, and prescription medicine that unless you're working with your doctor or your pharmacist, don't just go into a health food store and buy this stuff, buy anything. You know, you, there are so many um, interactions that you can't mix with medication, so you want to always be working with um, either a, a licensed health practitioner professional doctor or pharmacist whatever to make sure that you're not um, you're not taking anything that interferes with your medication and that can even be with simple things like vitamin C you know I mean everyone is definitely I think their vitamin C right now because of everything that's going on with the virus um, but just make sure that you're that if you're on other medication make sure that you're not interfering with the um, how that medication works Okay, so here we are coming along here with the lentil soup. It's going to be really good with the uh, with the kale and the collar. It's going to give it that boost. Um, the other thing you can do, which I do often and I don't see it here, um, but if you have a health supplement in any kind of powder form or um, like maca would be really good in here for ginger, or I mean, sorry, for energy, not ginger. You could add ginger. We added ginger for circulation, but the maca does um, energy and stamina really good for the immune system. You could add some astragalus, which is really, really good. Um, even if you have like a ginseng capsule and you just want a little boost of energy, you could open up your ginseng capsule and put it in your soup. So I encourage you to um, turn your soups and your foods into medicine as well. Okay, so that's it for today. I, <laughs> I apologize for the little <clears throat> a little asthma kicking up, but you know, we, we do what we can with what we have. <laughs> so check out my Instagram, my YouTube channel, um, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, I look forward to your comments, and I will be in my course Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so we'll see you next Thursday at 11, and I look forward to um, any of your comments or suggestions on what you want me to share with you. We'll see you Thursday. Have a good day. Great weekend. Thanks for coming and hanging out.